Oh, and then those of you who are joining us uh, for our service, please open your Bible, if you would, to the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter. My message today is very simple. It is a blessing for mothers on Mother's Day. John chapter 19, and we're going to begin reading in verse... 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke seven words or seven times while he was on that cross. Now, his first word was a prayer to God. He asked God to forgive his enemies. His second word was a promise to the dying thief. His third word was to his mother Mary and to John, the beloved disciple. Speaking to his mother, Jesus said, Behold your son. And then speaking to John, Jesus said, Behold your mother. Now I want you to picture that scene for just a moment in your mind's eye. There are three crosses that stand upon Calvary's hill. Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, he hangs upon that central cross. And on this day, the mob is jeering, the soldiers are gambling, the religious leaders are rejoicing. But in the midst of all that, Jesus is suffering and dying. But Jesus looks down. He sees his mother standing near the cross. By her side is Jesus' disciple John. And Jesus lifts his voice and he says to his mother, Woman, look at John. From now on, he will be your son. And then Jesus speaks to John. And he says, John, from now on, Mary is to be your mother. And from that time on, the Bible tells us, John took Mary to, to his home. Now, you may say, preacher, that is an unusual verse to use for Mother's Day. Well, let me make an honest confession to you this morning. I have been preaching Mother's Day sermons for over 40 years, and I have never used this verse. But I felt led to use this verse today. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, lived a blameless life. He discharged fully his duties to man and to God. And Jesus was not willing to die and leave anything undone that he ought to do. So the Lord Jesus Christ, from that old rugged cross, he arranged for his mother's future. That spoke to my heart as I read those words this week. The Lord Jesus Christ here sets an example for us doesn't he? When God gave us the Ten Commandments, God gave us instructions on how we should act toward our parents. Listen to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. And then the familiar words we find in Ephesians chapter 6. Beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. Even in the darkest hour of Jesus' life, Jesus stopped long enough to do the right thing concerning his mother. 
Even while the Lord Jesus Christ was on that cross bearing the weight of the sins of the whole world upon himself, the Lord Jesus Christ takes time to make sure that his mother will be cared for. Now, as God, Jesus was dealing with eternal matters on that cross. And thank God he did. On Calvary's old rugged cross where Jesus suffered and died, Jesus shed his precious blood to pay the debt of my sin. I owed a debt that I could not pay. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe for me. Amen. But now there's something else Jesus is showing us on that cross today. He is showing us how important it is to take care of and to honor our mother. I want to share with you today a simple message, how to be a blessing to your mother on Mother's Day. These are simple points, but I mean these words from the bottom of my heart. The first thing that I want to tell you today is you should tell your mother that you love her. Now, you may think today, I don't have to tell my mother I love her. She knows I love her. Or I don't have to say I love her because I show my mother that I love her. Now, that all may be true. But I believe, in general, every mother needs verbal affirmation. They need to hear us say with our lips, I love you. Every time you see your mother, before you say goodbye, it's good to say, I love you with your lips. Mothers need to hear, I love you. Children need to hear, I love you. Husbands, wives need to hear, I love you too. Anybody in here ever read Dear Abby? Years and years ago, I used to read the newspaper. I don't ever see a newspaper anymore, but there was an article every day in the newspaper, a column called Dear Abby. And I would read the Dear Abby column right after I read the Peanuts uh, cartoon. The Peanuts cartoon and the, the Dear Abby and the sports page was my favorite part of the paper, but this is a, a letter that Dear Abby printed in her column, I guess probably 50 something years ago. Listen to these words. Dear Abby, I enlisted shortly after Pearl Harbor. 36 days later, I was on my way to the Philippines en route. The Philippines fell to the Japanese and we were routed to Australia. 11 days after we landed, I met the most beautiful girl in the whole world. On her, our first date, I told her I was going to marry her. I did 18 months later while on a 10-day R&R leave from New Guinea. And after more than 57 years of marriage and two children, my beloved Mary died five days before Christmas. And although we agreed that our ashes were to be scattered over the mountains, I found I could not part with hers. While Mary was alive, she would frequently say, you don't know how much I love you. And I'd always reply to her, likewise. I never said I love you. Now her ashes are on my dresser, where I tell her several times a day how much I love her. But it's too late. Although I wrote notes to her and poems to her, I could not bring myself to say to her those three little words, I love you, that I knew she longed to hear. Well, as my Mary was dying, the doctors told us she was in a coma. I sat by her bedside in the hospital, and I said to her, there are not enough words to tell you how much I love you. Moments later, she opened her eyes briefly and she whispered, not enough words. Soon after, my Mary died. The reason that I am writing you is to encourage men to express their feelings 
while their loved ones are alive. I don't know why, but many men are reluctant to express the depth of their feelings. And that letter was signed, Missing Mary in Colorado. Men, don't be like the man who told his wife, I told you I loved you when I married you 50 years ago. And if I ever changed my mind, I'll let you know. None of you would do that. And I know some men that say, well, I'm just not comfortable saying all that mushy stuff. Well, then be uncomfortable. But say it, because it needs to be said. Some men will say, well, I'm just not turned that way. Well, then you had better turn around. <laughs> because our wives, our children, our mother, they need to hear those words. I love you. You should tell your mother that you love her. Secondly, you should show your mother that you love her. When's the last time you gave your mom a big hug without her asking for it? When's the last time that you gave her a kiss on the cheek? If you think about it this morning, your mother is the first person who ever touched you. She wrapped you in her womb for nine months. And when you were born, her first act it was to hold you she cuddled you she stroked your head she rubbed your feet she held your little cheeks against her cheek she gave you a finger to grasp to hold on to do you remember when you were very little mama would say give mama some sugar and you'd puck her up and your mother would accept that wet sloppy kiss and she'd even say thank you. You remember when you would give mom bear hugs so tight that she didn't have to hold on to you. You just cling to her as she walked around. Your mother, she changed your diapers. She potty trained you. She held the Kleenex for you to blow your nose. When you stop and think about it, when, you're a when you were a child, your mother touched you constantly. And now, today, your mother is older. And now she needs your touches of affection. Just a hug for your mom would mean more to her than flour. It would mean more to her than candy. It would mean more to her than eating out. It would mean more to her than a piece of jewelry. Your mother never gets too old to deserve your physical affection. You should show your mother that you love. So first, give your mother the gift of affirmation. Then secondly, give her the gift of physical affection. And then thirdly, give your mother the gift of acknowledgement. You should be grateful to your mother. Do you know mothers have an incredible job? It's an unbelievable job, the job that mothers have. But it comes with no pay. There is no position in the business world that compares to the physical and the emotional and the spiritual commitment that is required in motherhood. I want to share with you a poem that I came across years ago. I couldn't find an author to this poem. You can find it on the internet. Uh, it, it simply says, No Occupation. That's the title. She rises up at break of day, and through her tasks she races. She cooks the meals as best she may and scrubs the children's faces. While uh, school books, lunches, homework too, all need consideration, and yet the census man insists she has no occupation. When breakfast dishes all are done, she bakes a pudding, maybe. She cleans the rooms up one by one. With one eye watching baby, the mending pile she then attacks by way of variation. And yet the census man insists she has no occupation. She irons for a little while, then presses pants for daddy. She welcomes with a cheery smile, returning the lass and laddie. A hearty dinner next she cooks, no time for relaxation. And yet the census man insists she has no occupation. Don't ever make the mistake of asking a lady, 
do you work or are you a stay-at-home mom? <laughs> Don't ask that question. You know, there are many moms and wives today that have to work on top of the full-time job they already have at home. And yet, in spite of all that she does for us, we sometimes can become impatient with mom. We forget to acknowledge all that she does. We tend to take it for granted. We get so used to mom taking care of things that we come to expect it. Oh, we get upset sometimes that our favorite clothes are still dirty. We sometimes get frustrated that our shirt's not ironed. We complain because we've run out of our favorite cookie. Oatmeal. Raisin. Debbie knows what my favorite cookies are. She came back from the store the other day and she says Walmart was out of oatmeal raisin cookies. What's this country coming to? <laughs> you know, for some of you, mama picks you up at school so you don't have to ride the bus. And then you complain because she's five minutes late. <laughs> Rather than being impatient with mom, we ought to be grateful for what mom does for us. I see the interaction of children and their parents since I drive a school bus every day and I pick up 50, 60 kids. I see those kids get on the bus and I see them get off the bus and I see their interaction with their mother. And I see some things sometimes that really trouble me. Let me just say this about it, that this morning. Young people, let me tell you, if you treated your friends like sometimes moms are treated, you wouldn't have any friends. Be nice to mom. And if you treated your friend's mom like you do your mom, then their mom wouldn't let their kid have anything to do with you. Moms deserve better than that. They deserve honor. They deserve respect. We ought to be grateful for our mother. Anybody remember listening to James Dobson on Focus on the Family Radio? On a broadcast probably 40 years ago, he read a letter from an 80-year-old woman on her birthday. She wrote a letter for her children. Listen to the words of this letter. She wrote, to all my children, I suppose my upcoming birthday started my thoughts along these lines. This is a good time to tell you what I really, truly want. And what I want, they're things that I can never get enough of, yet they are all free. I would like for you to come and sit with me and for you to be relaxed. We can talk or we can be silent. I would like for us just to be together. I need your patience when I don't hear what you say the first time. I know how tiresome it must be to always be repeating, but sometimes I must ask you to repeat. I need your patience when I think too much about the past with my slowness and my set ways. I want you to be understanding with what the years have done to me physically. Please be understanding about my personal care habits. I spill things. I lose things. I get unduly excited when I try to figure out my bank statement. I can't remember what time to take my medication or even if I took it already. I take too many naps, but sleep helps to pass the day. And then she wrote this. She says, well, there you have it. Time, patience, understanding, those are the priceless gifts that I want. Aren't those beautiful words? Then she writes, finally in his letter, the apostle Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is a wonderful feeling to know that his eye is on the sparrow and I know he cares for me. I guess being old is not so bad after all. Love, mom. Aren't those beautiful words? Fourth thing that I want you to consider this morning, you should spend time with your mother. Mothers listen as you pour out your heart. 
Mothers always have a sympathetic ear. Many of you, even as adult, you as an adult, you still go to mom. When you need somebody who will really listen and understand and who will always be on your side, it's no wonder we like to talk to mom because she listens. But now mom is a little older. She has some issues of her own and now it's your turn to be her rock. So take some time to listen to her. Now you might say, well, she's always complaining about something. Well, isn't that familiar? That's just what we used to do. You may say, well, mom always talks about herself. Well, maybe that's because her health doesn't allow her to go anywhere or to do much of anything. She doesn't have anything else to talk about. And then you may say, well, she always asks the same question over and over, over and over. Well, I think you and I should realize that in our older days, all of us have fears and anxieties. So my advice this morning is let's treat mom as we'd like to be treated when we are in her shoes. Let's give our moms the attention that they deserve. How do you spell love? You say, preacher, that's easy. You spell love, L-O-V-E. Let me tell you, there's another way to spell love. T-I-M-E. There's one thing that you give to a person that you can only give to a person once. And that is your time. The minutes, the hours, the days of your life. That's the most valuable thing you have, your time. Share time with your mom. Spend time with her. Just give mom a little of your time because that's what she truly longs for. Before. When your mother was raising you, she took all the time that was necessary to bring you up. It wasn't always easy for her. And now it's time for you to give back to her. She took the time to teach you and to care for your needs, and now is the time for you to care for her needs. You should spend time with your mother. And then we'll close with a final point that I want to share with you today, and that is you should show appreciation to your mother. I read about a fourth grade science class that had been studying magnets. They were learning about how metal objects were attracted to one another, to magnets. Fascinating. At the end of the week, the teacher put on the test what she thought was a very simple question. Six letters, starts with M, picks up things, what am I? Well, what she expected to fill in the blank was the letters. M-A-G-N-E-T. But she found when the test was taken up and the papers were graded, more than half the children in the class answered M-O-T-H-E-R, mother. Our mothers deserve our gratitude. Not just on Mother's Day, but every day. We should find a way to express our appreciation when they least expect it. You won't always have your mom, so give her appreciation while you have her. Remember, mom, she didn't spend all that she had on herself. When you were growing up, she spent what she had on you, and when your needs were met, then she would spend on herself. Mom did without so that you could have. Now it's time to give her something she deserves and needs, just your appreciation. You remember, Mom, she cleared her schedule so that she could run you around. Practice here, practice there, game here, game there. Mom gave up opportunities for herself so that you could have better opportunities. She has made so many sacrifices for you. So today, on Mother's Day, show her your appreciation. Show her that you are grateful. Let me give you a math question this morning since we're talking about school. How many of you like math? 
I didn't see it. Well, I see a couple of hands raised. All right, well, you should get this answer to this question. Okay? Here it is. I want you to state your answer as a fraction. How many of you like fractions? All right, listen closely. If there are 10 people at the table and one apple pie, how much pie does each person get? Think about that. Some of you had this pained look on your face, so I know you're thinking. What's the answer? Let me give you the answer. One ninth. And you look at me and you say, Preacher, you don't even know your fractions. The answer should be one tenth. Well, let me tell you this. I do know my fractions, but I also know my mom. And if there's 10 people sitting at the table and there's one, uh, one pie, my mom won't take a piece. That's mom's. So, today, show your appreciation to your mother for all the sacrifices she's made for you. She's made sacrifices that only God knows so that you can have the life that you have today. The Bible tells us to honor our fathers and mothers. And that is all, the only one of the Ten Commandments which includes a built-in promise of blessing. If you want to be blessed today, then you'd be a blessing to mom. Years ago, I think the year was 1974, in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution newspaper, there was a column that was written titled, When God Created Mothers. Anybody remember that? You say, preacher, I wasn't even here in 1974. Well, I remember the article. It was written by a lady named Irma Bombeck. And I want to share with you the words that she wrote. These are not my words, but hers. When the good Lord was creating mothers, he was into his sixth day of overtime. When the angel appeared and said, you're doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And God said, have you read the specs on this order? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have 180 movable parts all replaceable. Run on black coffee and leftovers. Have a lap that disappears when she stands up. A kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a broken heart. And six pairs of hands. The angel shook her head slowly and said, six pairs of hands, no way. God said, well, it's not the hands that are causing me the problem. It's the three pairs of eyes that mothers have to have. The angel asked, well, that's on the standard model. God nodded his head. Yeah, she's got one pair that sees through closed doors. When she asks, what are you kids doing in there when she already knows? And then she's got another set of eyes in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't see, but what she has to know. And of course, there are the ones here in the front that can look at a child when he goose up and say, I understand and I love you without so much as uttering a word. God said, the angel touching his sleeve, you better get some rest tomorrow. I can't, said God. <coughs> I'm so close to creating something so close to myself. Already I have one who heals herself when she is sick. She can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger. And she can get a nine-year-old boy to stand under a shower. The angels circle the model of the mother very slowly. The angel said it's too soft. God said it sadly, but she's tough. Can you imagine what this mother will have to do and endure? Well, can it think, the angel said. God said not only can it think, it can reason and compromise. Well, finally, the angel bent over and ran her finger across the cheek of the mother. The angel said, aha, there's a leak. I told you you were trying to put too much into this model. The Lord said, that's not a leak. It's a tear. 
The angel said, well, what's it for? And I think it's for joy and it's for sadness and it's for disappointment and pain and lowliness. The angel stood back and said, God, you are a genius. And somberly God said, I didn't put it there. But you moms, you know where that tear comes from. It comes from the love of a mother's heart. I want you to know this morning, mothers, you are one of the most special miracles of all of God's creation. And today we want you to know that we appreciate you and that we love you. How about a hand this morning for the crowning jewel of God's creation, our mother? Let's recognize them today. Moms, thank you. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, help us to never be too busy for mom. If you could take time and great effort for your mom on the cross in your death, help us to love mom while we have her in our life. May we learn today a powerful lesson from the example of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me invite you to stand with me. We're going to sing together as we close our service this morning, a hymn of invitation. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way.